Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk about data visualizations in Python. Today, we're talking about the Seaborn Joint Grid. So what is the Joint Grid? Well, it serves as the backbone for Seaborn's joint plot. It's similar to the facet grid and the pair grid, except for now we're going to have two main areas. The middle area, which you'll use to plot a joint distribution, and then the outer areas, which are your marginal distribution axes. Now let's take a look at the joint grid and the Seaborn Python code. And by the way, all of the code I'm about to show you is available on my GitHub page. To get started, I'll go ahead and import the Seaborn library and alias that as SNS. I'm going to load in some data from the Seaborn library, and these data are about cars. So you can see that in each row we have information about one particular type of car. I'm going to go ahead and set my styling to be dark grid, and now let's go ahead and create our joint grid. To do that, we'll reference the Seaborn library and call up the joint grid. And note that now we have capital letters on joint grid. That's a little bit different than some other Seaborn plots. So I go ahead and execute this, and what we'll see are just blank grids. So we have in this middle part here an area for a joint distribution, and on the side we have these two areas where we'll end up having marginal distributions. But right now everything is blank. If I go ahead and save the return output of this joint grid, however, that is if I set g equal to the joint grid, I can check the type of g, and we'll see here that this is a joint grid. We're going to be adding some additional components to this joint grid by referencing that variable g. But before we do that, what we need to do now is let the joint grid know what kind of data we're going to be putting onto this plot. So for us, we're going to be working with the cars data. Let's go ahead and assign the data argument to be cars. Now Seaborn will know anytime I reference a string, I'm really talking about a column within the cars data frame. For example, on the x-axis, let's go ahead and put the weight of these cars. And on the y-axis, we'll put the miles per gallon. So take a look at what happens when I go ahead and execute this part of the cell. I can run this, and we'll see that nothing has really happened yet, other than I now have weight written on my x-axis and miles per gallon written on my y-axis. That's because all we've done is create our joint grid. We haven't actually plotted any functions onto our grid yet. But when we do that in the next section, we're going to have the weight of the cars along the x-axis and the miles per gallon on the y-axis. So once we've created our joint grid, we need to let Seaborn know what kinds of plots we'd like to have on each of these different subplots. There are a couple different ways to do that, but let's start off using this method called plot. So I'm going to reference G, which is my joint grid. Then I'll use this method called plot. Now to this plot method, I need to pass in what kind of plot would I like to see on this middle joint area, and what kind of plot would I like to see on these areas that will have my marginal distributions. Let's go ahead and put a scatter plot on the main area, and on those side marginal areas, let's put a hist plot. Once I execute that, we'll actually be able to see all of our car's data. Here we have weight along the x-axis and miles per gallon along the y-axis, and we have a scatter point for every single car in our data set. This is showing us that there is some relationship here between weight and miles per gallon. As the cars get heavier, miles per gallon goes down. And we can also already see that we actually have a bit of a curvature here. It's not a strictly linear relationship. The other cool thing that the joint grid will show you are these marginal distributions. So up top, we have the distribution of what the weight looks like for our data set. We can see that most cars are relatively light, but we do have some heavier cars out here in the tail. On the side, we're actually getting a sense of what miles per gallon looks like for these cars. We have a lot of cars right around here at about 20 to 25 miles per gallon. So the Seaborn joint grid is very flexible, and there's many different plot types that you can include in either the main area or the side areas. So let's try another one. We could put a red plot in the middle, and let's put a KDE plot on the sides. 
We have the same weight and miles per gallon data, but now we also see this regression line. We also have KDE plots instead of histograms for our marginal distributions. But the joint grid is even more flexible than the joint plot. Remember that you have these two main areas, the middle joint distribution area and then the outer marginal areas. You can actually put whatever plots you want on each of these areas using Seaborn methods. Here's a code demonstration to show you how you can do that. So we just saw that we can use this plot method to plot out a reg plot and a KDE plot on our joint grid. But there's another way to do this syntax that turns out to be helpful at some points. So let's take a look at that as well. If I already have a joint grid set up like this one, if I want to plot something in the middle area, I can access this other method called plot joint. Now I'll pass in whatever kind of plot I'd like to see there, let's say the reg plot. So I can execute this and you'll see that Seaborn is just putting that reg plot in the middle joint area. And you can of course also add something to your marginals, you'll just reference plot marginals. Let's put a KDE plot there. So this gives us the same figure with slightly different syntax. Now why would you choose one versus the other? The other was certainly simpler, but one really big benefit of this syntax is let's say I want to do some styling, but only for the KDE plots. For example, maybe I want to fill underneath that line. I can go ahead and pass my styling directly here to this part of the plot marginals, and it doesn't affect my reg plot. So if you have styling that is specific to one part of the plot or the other, you can absolutely use this plot joint and plot marginals to do that. So far we've been putting one type of plot in our joint area and one type of plot in the marginals, but it turns out that you can actually put two different types of plots on the marginals if you want. So let's see how you can do that. First of all, let's say I have a joint grid like this one. Well, I can take my variable g and check out the different properties and options here. I'll just do g dot and hit tab. That will bring up this list of all of the different properties and methods that I have available to me. Take a look at these first few. I have access to the axes of my joint grid. So for example, this ax marg x, if I check the type of that, this is going to be the actual axes subplots of my joint grid. So what I can do is actually use these axes to be very specific about what kind of plot goes where. Let's try that out now. Let's say that I go ahead and create a joint grid. And for this joint grid, I'm going to put some X and Y data on it. And let's go ahead and keep with our theme of using the car's weight for the X and the car's miles per gallon for the Y. So I've just assigned those two panda series to the X and Y variables. I can go ahead and execute this, but so far we just have a joint grid. To go ahead and put some data onto this joint grid, we need to go ahead and reference the specific type of plot we want to create. So let's say that we want to put a reg plot in the center area. My x variable for this plot will be x, and my y variable will be y. Then I can tell Seaborn that I want to put this reg plot on a specific set of axes. Namely, here I'm going to put the red plot on this ax underscore joint. This will reference the joint axes subplot of our joint grid G. So we can go ahead and execute that, and we'll see that the red plot has been put in this area. And the benefit here is that now I can go ahead and add whatever kind of plots I want, let's say a KDE plot, my x variable will be x, and let's say that I want to put that KDE plot just in this top marginal area. So my axes for this plot will be x marg x. Now we'll see that we only have a KD plot up top and we do not have one over here on the side. So we can continue working with this and let's say we want to put a hist plot on that final side. So I'll go ahead and say now that my axes are equal to g dot x marg y. So you can really go wild here and customize these joint grids however you like you have even more power and customization than you do with the joint plot. You can also use hue to represent categorical variables in your data. Here's some code and how you can do that. So if you're familiar with Seaborn, you know that a lot of these different plots have an argument called hue, 
that will allow you to show off categorical variables within your data. Joint grid is no exception, so if you want to show off some category with the joint grid, what you can do is go up to your joint grid, reference this argument called hue, and just set this equal to whichever column you'd like to show off. Here I'm going to use the car's origin, and we have three different car origins in this data set, the US, Japan, and Europe. So each of those are getting their own hue, and we're able to see each dot color-coded, as well as an individual KDE plot for each of those. So we just saw that we can use hue to show off categorical variables, but if we use hue within the joint grid function, we're going to see those colors show up on all three of our subplots. What if you just wanted hue to show up on one of the plots? So let's say that we just want to see the car's origin on this top X marginal. What you could do is create your joint grid just like this one, and then we'll go into this KDE function, and we'll say that we only want hue to appear here. And note that now I'm referencing the entire Panda series. Once I execute that, you'll see that I have three different KDE plots up here, but all of the other subplots on our joint grid do not have those categories. And like usual, there's tons of styling that you can do for the Seaborn joint grid. Here's a look at that in the Python code. There are a couple different ways to style the joint grid. So let's say that we've used this plot method and we have two different functions here. We can go ahead and put in whatever styling keywords we'd like here, for example, making everything more transparent or potentially adding an edge color to all of our data. But notice that all of the keywords I'm putting in here are actually going to be applied to both the hist plot as well as the scatter plot. So whenever you're using this plot method, all of your styling keywords will be applied to both types of plots. If you've used this other type of syntax where we have plot joint and plot marginal separate, you can apply various different styling keywords to each of those plots individually. For example, in the reg plot, one thing that we could do is go ahead and make the line of our regression plot a different color. To do that, we would reference the line keywords and we'd pass in a dictionary of this color property that we'd like to switch to, let's say black. So notice that that update was only applied to our reg plot and did not change the color of our KDE plot. If we'd like to do something for the KDE plot, for example, we can fill underneath or even change its color to say purple, we can go ahead and put in those keywords within the plot marginals function to update those. So any kind of styling that you know how to do for these specific Seaborn plots can just get passed in through plot marginals or plot joint. There are a couple of different joint grid properties that can help you style your joint grid as well. So let's say that we have a plot like this one and we have the variable G, which is our joint grid. We can reference this method called set axis labels to directly influence what the labels of this plot will look like. So the way that this works is we'll pass in what do we want our X label to be. Let's say that that is going to be weight in pounds. And what will be the Y label? We'll go ahead and pass that in as well. Finally, if you want to increase the font size, you can do that here as well. I'll bump mine up to 14. So this will directly impact what the labels look like for your joint grid and you're referencing that through the methods of the join grid object. Let's just see one more. If you want to now save this figure, there's another method in here called save fig. And we'll just give this a name. Let's call it our joint grid example. Now we've actually saved that figure within our current working directory, and we can go ahead and open that up using a bash command here. I'll slide that back into view and we'll see the same figure has now been saved on our computer. So thanks so much for joining me today. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more about the Seaborn joint plot or pair grid, go ahead and check out my past videos about those. See you next time.